Okay, so let's say this is going to be a sort proof by contradiction. Let's say we somehow found an irrational number, let's call it, I don't know, delta, such that it has at some point a repeating decimal expansion. 231, 231, 231, etc. Now C, if there's a repeating decimal expansion, let's say you have, um, I don't know, 1 over 99 is 0.01010101, etc. That can be rewritten as 1 over 100 plus 1 over 10,000 10, plus 1 over 1 million, and so on and so forth. You can probably see the connection, because if I rewrite this as powers of 10, we get 1 over 10 to the 2 plus 1 over 10 to the 4 plus 1 over 10 to the 6, and so on. And actually, this is just a geometric series. So now, let's say we have an irrational number that's like this somehow. Well, if it has a repeating decimal expansion, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that number into two parts. Part number one is the part that doesn't repeat, which has to be finite by definition, and part number two is whatever repeats. 231, 231, and so on and so forth. So repeating and non-repeating. Because any terminating decimal expansion has to be rational by definition, you can always just write it as the digits divided by some power of 10. This non-repeating part is rational. So what about the repeating part? Well, the repeating part can be written as a geometric series. Depending on how many digits are in the part that repeats, if the number of digits is 3, for example, then the geometric series common ratio is going to be 10 to the 3. So the first is going to be 231 over 10 to the 3. The second is going to be 231 over 10 to the 6. The third is going to be 231 over 10 to the 9th. I'm using 231 as an example, and so on and so forth. And of course, that is going to be a geometric series. You can write it as 231 times 1 over 10 to the 3n for some n equals 1 to infinity. And now, well, what's the sum of a geometric series? The sum of r to the n is always equal to 1 over 1 minus r. And in this case, we're going to get 1 over 1 minus some power of 10. And that power of 10 depends on how many digits are in the repeating part. And that's going to be multiplied by what makes up the repeating part. But of course, what makes up the repeating part, since it terminates, has to be rational. So that is a rational number, and since it's 231 in this case, it's actually an integer. And this right here is going to be 10 to the n minus 1 divided by 10 to the n, which, if you flip over, is 10 to the n divided by 10 to the n minus 1. In other words, that is another rational number. And of course, a rational times a rational is another rational, which means that the repeating part can also be written as a rational number. But that means that the non-repeating part is irrational, the repeating part is irrational, their sum is also a rational number. And so we've come to a contradiction. This was supposed to be an irrational number, and yet it ended up being a rational number, which means that no irrational number can have a repeating part, because then that means the n in this equation is finite, which in turn means that what you get out is a rational number. So essentially, that's why. Any repeating, any repeating set of digits means you can rewrite it as a geometric series whose sum is always finite. Sorry, rational. No problem. <laughs>